Welcome to D&D Declassified. I'm Nathan. I'm Philip. I'm Jacob. And today we're going to be starting off a talk about Zero Session. Uh, in the Zero Session, uh, the first thing I would do is take your player one at a time into a Zero Session. Um, that gives you control over um, giving them the correct amount of information as you have it. Uh, so you're one-on-one, -on -one, there's no other people on the table interacting or um, uh, talking over the top yep. or giving you distractions. Yeah, it's a great time yeah. for it to be just you and them so you're able to have that one-on-one -on -one and there's no kind of pressure or... Yep, it also gives you those moments where you can go over sensitive things yep. like where's their line in the sand and that kind of thing that we'll get to. Um, so once you've got uh, your player one-on-one, -on -one. Um, you'd then go over, first of all, your table rules. So yeah. that would incorporate, um, again, rules. we've got a video yeah. up here. Um, you can click on that and go through that, but that'll go through your combat rules. Ooh, It'll go through, um, uh, basically, um, combat rules, dice rules, yeah. homebrew rules. Um, yeah, let's yeah. know what homebrew rules yeah, you're using in the campaign. It would yeah, also exactly. be a yeah. good time to see yeah. if they're bringing any rules into the campaign, or if they would like rules brought into the campaign, I should yeah, say. Yeah, because it's also two way because they might not like a rule, or they might want a sort of like yep. ex a better explain it, because it also gives you time to explain to them about yeah. the rule, yeah. and why you... and backwards and forwards and additional rules anyway. Yep, and it'll also let you know how experienced they are. So going through the table rules will let you know if they've played before, um, you know, uh, where they're at. If they've got homebrew rules, they've obviously played before. Yeah. Um, the more questions they have, obviously yeah. you're yeah. going to know how much experience they've got and that'll let you know on your table, you know, where they're at. It's just um, a good time to talk with them and yep. if they know nothing help them hit the ground running yeah yep. and know what to expect within the yep. campaign under your table so when they sit down as a group everyone individually has had that rule set given to them um, they're all aware of it so if later on you do run into any trouble you can just pull them aside and say hey you know we had a discussion about this in the zero session you know let's pull ourselves back into what yep. we agreed on So this is a way for you to get one-on-one -on -one with your player about their backstory as well as any changes that you might want to have with their backstory or for them to be like why they have particular skills because as a DM you can give your players additional skills and proficiencies and that's something you can do as well as gives you time to look over their character as well as to know what their character can do at the same time and let them know what their character can do. Yep. It's also a good time to be able to um, go through their backstory and um, get a concise story that you want to go with as a DM. So if you go through the backstory review with them, you can say, okay, here's where you want to go in there. Here's where, you know, yeah. I can possibly take it as a DM. So that way you're both on the same page as to what your actual backstory is going to be and where it will play out in the world without giving too much away, but enough for them to, I guess believe that they're going to be a good solid character in your world mm. Mm. it certainly gives them the opportunity <clears throat> for the DM to make use of it because it's the worst thing you can do is have a backstory and it just sit on the back burner and nothing yeah. be done with it Yeah. so just keep in mind that when you do the backstory review there are elements that you can use and that can make your world feel more lifelike, realistic full, yeah. yep. full. and also there's nothing better than, I don't know, some nugget of information that you thought was useless being smuggled in. Yep. Because all of a sudden, you know what's going on. Yep. The DM hasn't yep. explained it. Some bits could be new, but you know what's going on. Yeah. It also gives a, a chance for the player and the DM to be on the same page with that backstory. Yep. You know, the player may want to be a rogue that's, you know, uh, playing a Robin Hood kind of thing, stealing from the rich, giving the poor. Yep. But the DM might have misinterpreted that, that they just want to steal from everyone. It gives those moments in the zero session where just you and the player, you can talk about all of that yep. and you can go, okay, exactly what kind of rogue are you going to be? You know, if you're going to be a thief, you know, are you going to be in a guild? And all that kind of stuff. And then you can really solidify their journey that they want to take. Yep. Yeah. 
it's best to think of it as the final seal of approval. Yeah. Like you're yep. just whacking it on and it's done. Yep. Well, it does help when you, they're like if the player is a cleric or a paladin or a warlock, way for that for you in game to be like this is what your god asked you to do kind of thing. Like give yep. them a story hook before the story hook to why they're there if they are struggling to be like I don't know why I'm going with these people or yep. doing the kind of thing. Or Especially if they've never created a character before yeah. and if they've got a deity and they're not sure how to interact yeah. with that. Yeah. If in a zero session um, within a I guess a small story you can say you meet your god and you do this and that um, it gives that player a bit of I guess something to grab onto to play their RP side of it. Yeah. Yep, especially yep. before the first session gives them a nail. Rather than the guy just being dropped on them, they actually know yeah. what's about <clears throat> before. They've got a story of yep. themselves before they join the party. Yep. Yep. Playstyles. We're going to go through a little bit about uh, playstyles in your zero session. Um, that would be a one-on-one -on -one conversation you would have with your player. That would be going through um, <clears throat> how do they like to play? Um, are they a, ro a role-play heavy person? Are they more of a background kind of character? Do they want to be a murder hobo? It gives you that option to yeah. actually find out what kind of play style they want to do in your campaign yeah. and it gives you an idea as a DM as to how to fit them into your world. Um, if they come in with the expectation of a play style of, um, oh, you know, we're playing high magic, therefore, you know, I'm going to be a high magic user, yeah. then that's fine. If they're coming in with, uh, um, you know, I'm high magic and your campaign is magic band, you've got, you know, non-matching play styles that are going yeah. to happen there. So it's a good time to flesh out with your player what kind of play style they have. And also yeah. to include stuff that fits their play style. Because some people just like, killing stuff and that's yeah. yep. that shouldn't be shunned nor should it be um punished yep but too much of a thing is oh, yeah. bad but just include elements where they can play how they enjoy yeah, yeah. throw a horde of skeletons at them and go go for it there's yeah. your your killing yeah. but just remember this guy likes to do social encounters yeah. so you can't kill everything mm, because yeah. you know you want to have your social moments because you're not a killer yeah um, yeah so it is that play style of yeah mixing it yeah you might have a researcher in the party that's all like i want to know about the law of the world yeah, and definitely. So yep. there are good there'll be a lot of conversations where just the dm and the players will be doing something else so it's like yep. that's yeah. well we've yeah. i've run into that before in your campaign yeah where we had someone who was very law heavy what why where what when yeah. um it had nothing to do with nothing. They just love to ask the question yeah, of that's fine. everybody there is, because they want to know about the world. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But like you got to, they also got to remember, which is something I had an issue with. They got to remember that some people just want to do combat, and so it's yeah. very mm. scale like in. You can't if they've been quiet while you're getting law. You've got to accept that so they want to get something. Yeah, they yeah. want to kill someone in secret, and you have to sit there at the table and be like, okay, yeah. 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 So that, yeah. that zero session moment of play style is definitely a good thing to enter with your f uh, veterans. Um, they'll tell you exactly what they want. Yeah. A new player, you're going to have to fish around for what they want to do because they might, might not know what they yeah. want to actually do yet. Um, if you're lucky, yeah. you might find out, they might figure out what play style they like within the zero session when you do some one-on-one -on -one yeah. DMing with them. Yep. Um, it might take a couple of sessions, but... Yeah, yeah, it doesn't take too long to figure out what kind of player yeah, they are, but yeah. it also doesn't take long to watch them change. If they're an introvert and they start to, you know, really get onto their character, you'll be surprised how many introverts will have a moment that yeah. will, you know, shine in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they become actors sometimes as yeah. well, which is like yeah. a huge yeah. flip. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yep. So D and D is quite magical with that kind of thing, but yeah, yeah just just keep in mind, everyone has a player style and it. There is no bad place. No, there's no, say. there's no bad. Just, yep. just include moments where everyone can shine. Yeah. And for other players, it's all about sharing the spotlight. So it all comes under that. Yeah. Yeah. So just and and lowering, well, not lowering, but <laughs> ensuring that everyone's expectation on the table from the zero session is the same. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're not running a, a, oh, we're running a high magic, and they get to the table, and there's no magic involved. Yeah. Um, you've got to have your players come to the table with their play style in mind yeah. and what expectations are going to have met. Now we'll go on with 
party bond, which is to let your parties know that it is a cooperative game and it isn't a solo game. Part people have to work together, the party has to work together. If they don't want to work together, then you know you can't do much about that. Yeah, because really. yeah. at the end of the day, D and D. Well, you can have one player campaigns, but majority of the time it's a group of players coming together under a DM and telling a story or playing a campaign. And you've got to keep in mind that sometimes you have to work and as you might party. you have to work as a party. Even yeah. even if you think, hang on a minute, well, my character probably wouldn't do that. I've had situations where I've yeah. had to ignore what I genuinely think what my character would do just to, like, kick start. Yeah, yeah. To get us moving, because that can be really hard. Because yeah. we're yeah. all people. There's all that, and with people comes conflict. Oh. Well, well, like you were saying, D and D is a party experience. Yeah. Um, there are going to be moments where you get the spotlight. As we've said a few times, the spotlight can go on you. You can do your story element. But if it's fair for you to have a story element and the spotlight to be on you, then it's fair for it to go on you. Yep. And for me to pay attention while it's on you. It's not about me, then. It's yep. about their character. And then for you to have the same experience. You know, I want the spotlight on me. I'm here to play. But so are they. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. So bonding with your party and giving them their moments is just as much or just as important as your moment yeah. on the table. So, yeah, that bond that you'll share... Yeah. You know. Also, another thing to keep in mind is the DM's going to give you stuff that will help bring the party together or give you a direction where you can all go. Um, sometimes you don't take him up on it, but it helps to like yeah. take the hooks that he gives you. Because yeah. one thing that I've seen happen a lot is you come together as a party for one job. Once that job's done, it's, hey, strangers, yeah. I'm going to go my own way because yeah. yeah. the reason why we're together is finished. Or, and so, that mentality is pretty much why you're at D&D. &D. Yeah. Because you are here to be a yeah. party. You're here to enjoy a, a, a story yeah. together. You're here to go upon a journey as a bonded party. If your mentality is, oh, you know, I, I'm only after gold. If the golds, if you guys aren't after gold, then I'm going elsewhere. Well... Yeah. Maybe change your mentality a bit to go, yeah. hey, you know, maybe I'm after party gold. What yeah. can I do to get the party more gold? Or not just me or influence. Yeah. Because a solo thought pattern in D&D &D can be quite destructive for yeah. the table. You get one person going off all the time doing their own mission, then the story yeah, becomes I'll... about them and you're sitting well, there waiting. Yeah, it's also hard for the other players to, if did they, like trying to bring that player back into the party because... It might be, say, there's four of us in a group kind of thing, and there's a fifth person that is wanting to do their own thing, walking away from the party when we're making group decisions and then coming back and be like, oh, what's the plan? But it has no input but wants. Yeah. To, I've, I've also yeah. experienced another one where there's uh, that certain player that has been given a backstory. Their backstory is... Um, you know, they're a magic user and yeah. such, but they want to keep killing using a knife and stuff, so they're not yeah. playing uh, that style, and they're an assassin in the background, um, and so they're always against the party. Yeah. You know, I'm going to stab you if you don't give me half of that loot, that kind of thing. That's not going to bond your party. No. Um, so uh, this, yeah. just keep in mind that... Conflict's going to happen. Conflict's going to happen, Conflict's but... It's okay, though. Yeah. It's okay, like yeah. you said, but try and... Don't take actions that will screw up the party. Yeah. Because well, the, the DM might not give you it, which is a fault on their own. Yeah. But try and take the hooks he gives you, or like the subtle yeah. jabs to keep you the party can get, You can get a Steve, though. Now, by Steve, I mean your dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, an example of that, um, we'd give Steve a story hook. Uh, it would be, let's, you know, there's a... A road that leads to a castle. We'd go, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the road that leads to the castle. That's why I'm going that way. Yeah. Um, he's famous for that. Your dad on the yeah. table. He very much, and that's fine. Um, that gives yeah. you your own gameplay at the same time, but it does leave the party going. Bye, road. 
we want to check the castle and we oh. end up going elsewhere. Everyone but you wants to go to the castle, so come I'm, on. I'm in yep. control of the cart, therefore not the castle. Yeah, that's, and that's, a, <laughs> that's what we've run into. <laughs> oh, who's driving the cart? See a castle. Yeah. Um, the, and <laughs> <laughs> it, it 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 can be funny once or twice, but yeah. if it happens all the time, you will build resentment. Yeah. Um, just remember, everything you do is for the party. You're, yeah. you're there for each other. Even if you are, you know, put in different factions and you're against each yeah. other, you're still a party. Yeah. You're still... Just, just keep in mind that and you'll be fine. Yeah. 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 You can have fun. At the end of the day, you're not here to piss everyone off on the table yeah. and create conflict. I mean, yeah, your character can be a conflict character, but conflict in the party is fine. That gets some good RP going, but not Outside, every time, yeah. every time, every time. And that character's now, oh, you're the conflict, you sit over there, we're going to do this because every time you come in, you cause conflict. Yeah. Uh, you've got to learn to rein <laughs> that in. Yeah. yeah. We're going to talk about player mode. So in a zero session, it's a really good time to take your player aside and say, okay, uh, we've gone through your backstory. Uh, we've gone through your expectations on the table. I know what your play style is, but what's motivating you to come to my table each time and have fun? You know, what's going to keep you coming back? What's going to motivate you to stay? You know, what can I do as a DM to ensure you walk away from my session having fun? Yeah. You know, um, what's the motivations of your character you know is your character um motivated by money are they motivated by hate are they motivated by a death of a family member yep. um motivation side of things is a great thing to have a one-on-one -on -one with because then you as a dm have a clear idea about what your player wants on that table and what's going to keep them coming back also with the whole character motivations you can work that into your story because they're gonna want to at some point resolve that yep whatever it is it could be like you said death of a family member money they could just want money is yep. there a reason why they want money did you grow up poor and you've you just always wanted to be wealthy what it feels like to be rich or is it to pay off your family's debts yep. do you owe someone money <clears throat> and is that why you have a fanatic desire for gold yeah, yeah. And that, that's a perfect point as well. Your conversation there will give you content as a DM to write into yeah. your campaign. So you sitting there while they're talking, just taking some notes. For the next 15 yeah. sessions, you've got, if you've got five players, you've got five players' worth of motivations there to play yeah. with. Yeah. You know, I'm motivated by money because my family was yeah. killed and we were in a poor district. Poor, money, killed. You know, where am I going to play with this? Yeah, was, yeah. you oh. could work so much of that into the campaign they could be like yeah. a mini arc where they resolve that or, yeah you know or they get to feel what it's like to be rich and how boring yeah. they they may find it and they go okay i'm actually happier with the party on the adventure than what i am sitting at home with slaves or you know uh, workers doing everything yeah. for me because oh i'm going to get up and go it's like no 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 sir i've got that for you oh well what do i do yeah and you all know? of a sudden you've got character development yeah. they've changed yeah and they can talk about that because one thing that everybody likes doing is talking about their character at the end of a session what yeah. happened to them and you can yeah it's just a good character feeling. progression is probably the thing that most people like to enjoy about even i love talking about my previous character progression from where i started to where it is now especially in your campaign the character progression of my character oh, it's gone yeah yeah you've but gone from being a, yeah. a, a shifter to a what wear bear yeah. well not just that to despising humanity to um actually being somewhat caring i think especially when going to the human city yep that was probably a huge change in my character for yeah that just, was yeah 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 so yeah uh, yeah, well, the, your motivations would have completely changed yeah. with the... Uh, I'm actually working with a king, which was a huge... Yeah, well, yeah. from yeah. wondering what a king is to yeah. oh. wondering why people yeah. follow a king <laughs> to now... Can't you just kill a king and take his crown? Yeah, to now working for him, so... Yeah. Why does he need an army to protect him? Can he protect himself? Well, yeah. I think a conversation... <laughs> yeah, you know, the, there was a multitude of conversations about the king and if he could kill him, take his stuff. Why can't I kill the king? Yeah. Why is he in charge? Why can't I be in charge? There was a lot of, like... Yeah, why does he need an army him? to protect him? I think it was a huge, like, 
Poe's like, what? Yeah. yeah. Well, for a shifter. Yeah. Who lived a in the barrens. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah. tribesmen to understanding the motivations of a king. Nation, yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was such great RP and... Yeah, your your motivations have changed a lot. So, yeah. um, me as the DM speaking with you regarding the motivations yeah. of your character, it was fun to be able to put you in the situations where, where this is what you know, this is what's in the rest of the world. Yeah. So, how are you going to deal with a city? Yeah. Oh, a water You'd wagon. Never been, yeah. A water wagon. A, wa- <laughs> yeah, a boat is a water, water wagon. wagon. <laughs> like, uh, it, there was just a lot of yeah. interactions there that I got to play with just through Walls, you. I think, was a huge thing as well. Yeah, uh, there was a the lot of... The town we came across was a walled, walled town. In, walled in town. Yeah, because yeah. you're a character from a background that had no concept of... Stone. Writing. Was it stone? Stonework was not even a thing. It was very yeah. much mud-fatched houses. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, but your player motivations within that yeah. allowed me to, yeah, you know, foreshadow a few things for you. And that was, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. that was good. Yeah. So that's a great, I don't know, example of yeah. using motivations and them shifting and writing them into your campaign. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about, for a DM, that zero session, not only finding out what your players want, but also them giving you ideas to put into the campaign. A zero session really will give a DM a good idea about where a player is at in their play, but it'll also give uh, a lot of ideas for you. Um, Just listen closely to what they talk about uh, when you're asking the questions. I think I actually did a questionnaire in the zero session. Yeah. And like, what do you want to do? And I think I said, yeah, to like destroy your humanity was yeah, like yeah. your big... phobias. Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself? What do you want to do in What's the game? Your end goal? What's your end goal? Which so I actually I've got a lot got to... <laughs> pretty early on, yeah. but I'm still pushing forward yeah. because yeah, because that to you, yeah. to me, that wasn't an end goal. That was just uh, he wanted to be a werewolf, so I threw it at him really early. Um, well, f- yes, yeah. I played it and I loved it. Also. <laughs> Horrible curse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, um, we'll move on from that. But yeah. 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 But um, yeah, motivations. It also gives away like if that motivation is in like revenge, will they continue to play with the party? You might be having an offset, like you know, an alternate. Like they weren't the main mastermind behind it. It was someone, and it, you could actually link the mastermind to someone else's backstory. And or, then, in, or, yeah. or in with the big bad. Yeah. So you know, it's not only. Yeah did this party that we're rolling through that killed your family for no reason other than they wanted to use the house. They were just the trigger. They, they were, were just a, yeah. 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 yeah, they were working for the big bad, which yeah. automatically gives motivation to stick with the party and see through yeah. the yeah. campaign. And uh, yeah. you can easily link two motivations two stories, together yeah. and yeah. people will be like, we'll bring this together. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a brotherhood pretty much instantaneous. Yeah, from that. yeah. It's a moment that two players can share that's unique yeah. to them at the table. Yeah. Now we'll talk about scene arrangement. This is something that can will be very helpful for you as a DM and asking the player who they would might want to sit next to if they are playing a class that they haven't played before. You could ask them, do you mind sitting next to Bob? He has played at this class before. He, If you need help, you can ask him for some help or that kind of thing. Yep. Or it could just be like, I want to sit next to my friend, friend Jill. You know, yep. we, we're we thick as thieves. And that yep. kind of yeah, thing. I feel or, more comfortable next to this guy. Yeah. Could I please sit next to him? Yeah. As a DM, you can say, oh, how about I put you opposite each other? Yeah. That way you get to sit someone new next to yep. you. Yeah but you can still see your best mate and you can look at each yeah. other and have those moments across the table, but you're getting to sit next to yeah. someone who has played your class or you've not met, so it's a moment that you can meet someone yeah. new. Um, table arrangements, yeah. I found as a DM, like I said earlier, um, sitting Phil next to me as a DM so I could ask him yeah. questions that I didn't know. Um, sitting players that had run a class with a new player that had never run that class is very smart of a DM to do. Um, So seating arrangements, ask them where they'd like to sit and then offer the best seating arrangement that's going to help not only them but your party to grow. And sometimes you're going to come across players that get along too well and they can be disruptive. Yeah. Looking at you, buddy. 
Look at, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. A campaign where me and you were twins. Yes, and uh, we had. We to had to be moved across yeah. because we were <laughs> causing yeah. drama. We, so we were slowly. causing a lot of drama. <laughs> 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 well, we were taking over the world, one yeah. person and at a time. Yeah. Me and Jay could do that now on an online campaign where and we Steve are. And Steve and anyone. <sighs> well, like, yeah. we we derail so much. Yeah. Like, oh, we're meant to be helping people. We took all these thieves skills weapons and we've been reselling them to the general public <laughs> like we just like rebranded it like it's yeah. got like a black mark symbol and we're like oh a two beer things boom rebranded selling them and we'll put like gold inlays <laughs> <laughs> yeah perfect yeah so and like, yeah some some people will just get along too well yeah and that can just go off into their own world well. separate from your table <laughs> and while that that's amazing that's great but if you're a new DM, that would just... That's going to annoy you so quickly. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. you, you're trying to have everyone's attention so you can, you know, yeah. work through stuff. And these two players, or three players, they're are just... back business where they're, they're not helping yeah. the party whatsoever. They're just personal games. Look, it's, it's okay to have that back business, but make sure you're sitting next to someone who's never had a business before. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> including them. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, just... Yeah. It's yeah. okay for players to get along, but when they become too oh. disruptive to the table, it's yeah. okay to move them. Just say, yeah. hey, probably talk to them first before moving them and see if that does anything. Yeah. I, um, quite often on my table, um, I started my players off with a folder. Yeah. Um, it contained the rules. It contained a map of the area. Um, yeah, I've got, yeah. I'm on my D&D table now. I've got the folders in my view. Um, yeah. yeah, you can hold one up. Yeah. Um, so everyone got given a folder. Um, I'll quite often shift those folders around on the table yeah. so they'll come in and go, oh, where am I sitting today? Because it gives people the yeah. opportunity to be next to someone they haven't sat next to before. Yeah. Um, but that's only now that the players have met each other. Yeah. They've been playing for a year yeah. and they're comfortable with the party. Um, I wouldn't do that in the first few sessions. I would yeah. have that allocated seating. And a good way to do that is have a folder. Um, I mean, I, as a DM, gave a starter pack. I, I, gave, yeah. I bought some cheap dice from China. Um, they're in a little blue bag. I gave them a pencil. I gave them a no pad. pad. I gave them a folder with a map, the rules of the table, um, the world information yep. and it was all in a folder and then as i handed out information about the world they had a folder to put yep. it all in and it was easy to store which has been incredibly useful to put all the maps and i don't know yeah. little tidbits we get because sometimes you just lose track of them yep. yeah yeah that was just something i did personally i mean I, I started with miniature potions and i went overboard but as a as we've gone on over a year i've culled a lot of that down yeah, the and just made it simplified out of hand i think because we were updating it in person but not on D &D not beyond on D &D beyond yeah and in front of us we had potions and then some people as we we're moving around we were unsure if certain people use potions because yeah. is that my potion is it yours yeah i yeah. feel like I, I lost a lot of potions well right that. yeah that's, that's, that's why i got rid of them yeah. as i was opposite where i am now and i had a lot of potions in front of me and i knew i had never used any of my potions yeah but that was missing potions and I'm like who stole my potions and <laughs> stuff like yeah. that because I know I didn't yeah. use them but so yeah. it, props are great yeah. they're a great thing to add in I mean I, I from rogues have uh, door locks so I pass them a puzzle and they have to undo that puzzle within a certain period of time otherwise the door locks and alarms go off um, I'm right into that kind of thing but I didn't throw any of that on the table until they were comfortable like um, the ring that I completed when I wasn't meant to, and you. Yeah, but that's a that's a that's <laughs> okay. Slap on the hand, like no, stop it. <laughs> Do it yeah. in game time, not out of yeah. game time. Uh, I, I'm a fan of that kind of thing, um, but back to seating. Because I think we got off topic. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Um, well, um, yeah. Seating is important. Yeah. It will bond your party more. Um, it will enable. Um, Phil and Jacob to become friends. It will enable, you know, uh, Jill and Jacob, who have always been friends, to branch out yeah. to sit next to someone they haven't met before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll give them something to talk about. Oh, what happened to you two? I saw you two doing a mission over there while I was over here. And it'll give them something yeah. fresh to talk about as yeah. well. Yeah. So splitting 
friends up isn't a bad idea, um, but make sure your players are comfortable with yep. where they're sitting. Um, yep. Yeah, the zero session is for that as well. Yep.